You know, uh, one of the things that we've pointed out every time we've talked about the company's results is that user growth was below the street's expectations. But I think it's probably fair to say it, it's above what the feared drop could have been. And that's something that I saw in at least one analyst note this morning, kind of looking through things. Um, there was a lot of concern that the user growth would really take a steep drop after you all banned President uh, Trump. Um, and, and, and we saw a lot of people leave the platform as a result. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you're seeing there and how you feel about things in the future? Sure. And first, just a reminder, we added 40 million people to our DAU last year, 5 million last quarter. We grew 27 percent year over year. We did share a little more detail on this quarter and this year as well. Given all the things happening in the world, we thought a little more clarity made sense. In January, we added more DAU than the average of the last four Januaries. So hopefully that gives people a sense for the momentum we've got with all the hard work we've done on the service and all the great things happening around the world. Secondly, we said that we expect DAU to grow about 20% for the March quarter. And that's against a tough comp. We grew 24% year, uh, year over year in 2020 when the COVID group joined us in March already. In terms of the pandemic, as you mentioned, that was a big driver for growth. People spending a lot more time at home and looking for other things to do and signing up for Twitter was certainly one of them. As we come out of the pandemic, what are your thoughts not only about new users coming in, but just about the amount of time people spend on Twitter? Well, we don't focus as much on how much time people spend as we think about helping them find what they're looking for when they come to Twitter. If we f help you find the topic, the information, whether it's around the Super Bowl, around politics or entertainment, you're going to come back over and over again. We want Twitter to be a daily habit for people where they find conversations they want to be a part of and where they learn from those conversations. That COVID group that joined us in March, they've retained better than previous groups have, which tells us that we're doing something right in the product and better helping people today than we have in the past. The top of funnel continues to be really healthy and consistent. So we're getting lots of opportunities every day all over the world to help people find what they're looking for on the service. Another thing I saw several analysts pointing to today was just the strong brand ad recovery, how much you were doing with that. And, and, and that was something that several of them kind of pointed to for why the stock's up today, too. What are you seeing in terms of advertising the, the fight for advertising, not only from other digital platforms, but also what happens with the more traditional advertising forms, how you try and steal uh, ad dollars from them as well? Well, there's multiple hundreds of billions of dollars that grow every year that are spent on digital ads. And a lot of that money is moving from other places, whether it's TV or billboards, as consumers change where and how they spend their time. Advertisers are just adjusting where and how they look for their next customer and re-engage with their existing customers. That's been great for Twitter. It means that when a fan isn't in the stands during a game because of the virus, uh, the advertisers are looking for them on Twitter. We had 40 of the Super Bowl advertisers advertising on Twitter at the same time. It's a great example of that. We think a lot of these trends they've changed for good. People's habits, even when they get back to the stands, uh, these. They'll be spending their time on Twitter, a credible second screen where they can engage with people around the topic or event that they're most interested in at that time. Now, there's also been a, a lot of questions coming about what will happen in terms of the subscription model for you all. I know you have Analyst Day in a few weeks coming up, but what can you share with us now about how that might work and, and how big of an impact you think that'll have in terms of revenue? Well, we've been thinking more about how we can help people with premium services on Twitter. That means for a consumer, we might give them uh, more features for a business. We might help them create a business presence on the service. Uh, that's an area where you'll see us test over the course this year, and you'll see more from us over time. We're also going to continue to work really hard around that big digital ads market because that is the place where we feel like we have the most uh, room to grow in the very near term here and the pace of innovation on our revenue products where we just announced our new version of MAP a couple of days ago. We announced a revamped version of our website, Clicks product as well. Uh, there's so much room for us to grow uh, in the digital ads market while working on these subscription products as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.